entertainmentbuddha.com Hey now everyone, Matt Haywood here from EntertainmentBuddha.com and today we're checking out an early look of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In particular, we're going to look at the game's focus on a much deeper dialogue system, choice system. So in this game, you are literally free to play as you see fit. Yeah, there's two modes, there's the guided mode, and then there is the kind of explore your own Odyssey mode, which I am playing, which means I don't really get any guided direction through the game. I have to go explore, find things, get quests going. And for each quest, well, most of the quests, you now have a lot of choice in how you handle the quest. So depending on the choices you make will depend on how the quest goes, but it will also depend on how your overall campaign plays out. So I just wanted to show off a couple instances of, of how the dialogue system and the choice system has become much more important and deeper in Assassin's Creed Odyssey and how it can potentially change your experience and your overall campaign. All right, so here we go. All right, so the first example of the choice system takes place in an early main mission where you have to approach this dear this collector. And basically, depending on your choices, you can either kill him you can rough them up, you can break some stuff, but either way, you have options to go about getting to the end of this quest. So let's go ahead and let it play out. I owe him double because of interest. I don't have it to spare. You should have thought of that when you borrowed Drachmi, Greece. But my family. It's hot. I'm in a bad mood. And you are going to pay. We both know it. Now the question is. What do I break first? You? Or your merchandise? You told Marcos I've paid enough already. I won't bow to... to... to a mercenary or to someone foolish enough to borrow money from the Cyclops. From the Cyclops? That's how he bought his vineyard? Look, I know you'd be dead without Marcos. What with him taking you off the street as a kid. But you know what he's doing is crazy. Malaka. Still, that doesn't change the drachmi you owe. Face it. Once the Cyclops gets hold of you, you'll both be dead. <gasps> all right, all right. I'll pay you. Just stop. Fine. The money's yours. Just leave. Pleasure doing business with you, Luris. Keep my name off your lips. I don't want the Cyclops coming after me for the debt you can't pay. All right, so this next cutscene happened at the end of a side quest I was completing, and it gave me a, another little mini quest to tap into. So basically, I'm at this shrine, and I hear this lady praying to it. And it gives me the choice of either going along and kind of pretending to be the god to grant the lady the wishes, or to ignore her. I went ahead and decided to play god, which then led into another side mission. So again, you can just see how the dialogue system in AC Odyssey can impact your experience. Without it, without you... I'm listening, child of Vermis. Oh, mighty God, I beg you, help me. Your prayer is heard. You will find riches at your door sooner than you expect. I knew you'd listen. My every sunrise and sunset is yours. Everything beneath my humble roof in Sami is devoted to you. Yes, now go home and wait for fate to intervene. I will, great God, I will. Well, if money is what she needs, the bandit stolen loot will do just fine. All right, and the final look we're going to get at AC Odyssey's dialogue system comes towards the end of Chapter 1 where you're getting ready to leave the, the, the first main location, which is this island that the... Uh, first chapter takes place on 
and you're uh, you, during this cutscene, you're presented with one of the main NPCs, Phoebe here, this little girl, and she gives you some questions that you need to answer. And I do believe they're going to have major impacts on how my quest, my campaign story plays out. Uh, because I can either deny her coming with me, uh, I can tell her, hey, we'll see each other again, or I, could, I, I believe I could have just brought her with me. Uh, it then moves into another set of choices, not as impactful in the story with another NPC, Marcos. But again, you, you're just going to see the choices presented and then how they affect the uh, replies given by both characters, as well as how it can possibly affect the overarching campaign narrative. Wait for me, Cassandra. I'm all packed and everything. You're coming, are you? If you're going, I'm going. Phoebe, you're not old enough. I, I can look after myself. I, I don't need anyone to help me. But there wouldn't be any trouble. Promise. If I can't come, then take Hara. Hara? My pet eagle. She's my friend. Mother gave her to me. But she'll be your friend now. And it'll be like I'm there with you. You know, to remind you of me. Thanks, Phoebe. But you have to promise we'll see each other again. It's up to the fates, but... I'd like to. The fates know we're best friends, Cassandra. They'll make sure we meet again. If you say so. I say so. Cassandra! Leaving Kefalonia without saying goodbye to your dear Marcos? Tell me it isn't true. Well, you're here now, so it won't be true. Goodbye, Marcos. All these years as a dynamic duo! I'll never replace you! Well, I may need another assistant someday, but it won't be easy. Come now, give me a hug. All right, come here. Yes, bring it in. Oh, will I ever miss you, Cassandra? Thanks, Marcos. I'll miss you too. And what does the future hold for you? Wine, of course. Though you never know when the vines will wither. I'm always ready for another adventure. Speaking of adventure, I have a task for you, dear Phoebe. An adventure? Yes! Already following in your footsteps, isn't she, my friend? Ready to set sail? EntertainmentBooter.com <laughs>